Hello, welcome to the second lecture of Artline XP 2022 Interior Preliminary Course, the Foundation Workshop. Previously, we covered the living room interior design. I hope you were able to complete it by yourself. I start the program. On the left, we can see the last used projects. If I click on this one, for example, I see the floor plan. This was the project from the living room interior workshop. If I don't want to keep it here in the list, I can remove it with a minus sign. I start a new project. First, I save it using the Save Project command. I suggest working under the Archline XP Draw folder. Here we can create different folders, for example, customer name. We will work in the folder 2022 Basic Preliminary. Let's start with the user interface. At the top, you will see the ribbon bar. It has submenus, which we will use to create and edit items. Next to it, we see the Quick Access Toolbar. We have displayed the most commonly used instructions here. It can be expanded, modified by clicking on the arrow next to it. If we have changed the user interface a lot, it is resettable back to the default in the Toolbars menu. Underneath, you can see the different elements of the user interface that can be turned on and off. I don't usually use it to turn on the Info, Reference and Move toolbars as I can access them from elsewhere. The View Control bar is not turned on by default. I suggest you to turn it on because, for example, we will set the drawing scale here. On the left, you will see the side toolbar, which consists of several sections. The Properties, the Design Center, the Project Navigator and the Help menu. The side toolbar can be pinned or hidden. Then, if I move the cursor away from it, it does not appear, so the drawing area can be much larger. However, when I move the cursor towards it, the corresponding item will appear. I recommend using it pinned while you are learning Archline XP. And the bottom part is the status bar, where we will find very important comments. For example, the level editor. Here is the collection of comments for building the 3D model. And here is the layer manager. I've just shown you that I can hide the side toolbar so the drawing area is bigger. There is one more option to use a large drawing area, that is the clean screen. After clicking, I can see the drawing area in large size. Clicking again takes me back to the original setting. At the bottom right is the navigation bar or navibar for short. This will be explained in more detail shortly. Let's first get to know the two-dimensional drawing elements. On the ribbon bar, select Drafting menu and you will find these elements under it. Let's start drawing. I select the Line tool. I draw a line, move the cursor horizontally, a red marker appears, indicating the horizontal direction. I click, then move the cursor vertically, click. After that, need to 45 degrees, click. When I'm done, I press Enter. This completes the series of lines and I can start the next series. If I now press Enter twice, I have also closed the instruction. This is also indicated by the cursor change to arrow form. Now I'm going to draw a polyline, just like before. I will close with Enter and close the instruction with another enter. What is the difference between a sequence of lines and a polyline? If I click on a line, it's just a single element. These elements are not connected. If I click on polyline, it is considered as one element. Let me show you an interesting possibility. How can you turn a series of lines into a polyline? I click on one of the lines, then click on Edit, and then on Turn into Polyline. You need to select the end of the line chain. Let's see, it's one element now. Let's look at the next tool, which is Rectangle. 
I will draw a rectangle with its two opposite corners. I can resize it very easily by rewriting the values. The dimensions should be 1000 mm and 2000 mm. Now I draw another rectangle here, then circles with center points. I can specify the radius. Let it be 1000 mm. Let's discuss directional locking. You've seen that when I drew a line, I started in the horizontal direction. Then the cursor snapped to it. This was indicated by the red dash line. In this case, I can also enter a value, for example, 3000 mm. Then I drew a 2000 mm long vertical line. I can use another tool to lock the direction. I want to draw a line horizontally to the end point of this element. The other way to lock the direction is to use the shift key. Here is what I do. I move the cursor in the right direction and press shift. The cursor will be then dragged to the nearest specific angle. These are 0, 45, 90, 180 and so on. Then I specify how far the line should go, for example, to this point. Now I undo the last step. You can undo to depths of 16 steps. Let's see. How can I draw a line in a given direction, for example, at an angle of 30 degrees to horizontal? See, here is this little table under the cursor, showing the length and angle. By pressing the tab key, I can enter into the table. Pressing the tab again, I can enter the angle, 30 degrees. I've locked the direction to 30 degrees and now enter the length. Next. Let's look at the options of selection. What does it mean to select an item? I click on an item and it is selected. It has changes, color and markers appear. Click on another item. Now this item will be selected, but not the first one. How can I select several items at the same time? I select an item, press Ctrl key and select the other one. On the left, the side toolbar shows the common properties of these elements, which I can modify. For example, I can change the color of the selected items to green in one step. How can I select a large group of items? For this, I will use the selection window. I zoom out a bit and start from the right side of my drawing page and press the left mouse button. I hold it down and click on the other side giving the other corner of the selection window. The color of this selection window is green. With this, all elements that are entirely within or intersect the selection window are selected. Press Escape to exit the selection. Now I will move from the left to right. I will create a selection window of about the same size as before. At this point of the window, color is blue. Now, only the items that are entirely within the selection window have been selected. Let's look at the selection by element type. For example, I want to select all circles on this drawing. I right-click on the circle tool, select all these elements. The circles are selected. Let's look it for all lines. Select all these elements lines are selected. Obviously, not the polylines because that's a different element type. Now, I delete all the elements in the drawing. I select them with a large selection window and click on the red X. Let's start designing a building. In the previous workshop, I introduced you the compact method of ArchLine XP, the room maker. In today's presentation, I will show you the detailed method. First, let's look at the PDF file of the floor plan that I'm going to edit out. Starting from this point, we draw walls. Look at the dimensions given here. These are internal dimensions, so we are seeing the internal lengths of the walls on the plan. Go to the building menu. First, I set the wall property in the menu. 
I'm going to work with a wall that is 2,700 mm high and 380 mm wide, which is also saved in style. One layered 38 wide wall. I click on the wall command. I start drawing the wall near the origin. The program shows the wall maker with a blue reference line to the right of it. The wall thickness is on the left side. When I move my cursor vertically, the reference line turns green, indicating the vertical direction. The reference line can be on the left, on the right side, or in the middle of the wall. If the reference line is not on the correct side, I can toggle it using the options menu. But pressing the F5 key or the space bar does the same thing. If the reference line is now on the correct side, I enter the length 7500 mm. I'm using the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. When I press it, the drawing can be moved freely. I move my cursor to the right and enter the length 5000 mm. I go down. I add the length 4400 mm. Then I move to the right by 3500 mm. Down 5200 mm and finally left 6400 mm. All that is left is the final wall. Here I don't need to enter a value but click on the starting point to create the wall. If the object snap is turned on, it will drag the cursor to the special points and I can work very precisely. If you turn off the object snap, you cannot work accurately, so pay close attention to that. The 3D model has also been created. Above we see the view tabs. If we click on view 1, the 3D window will move to the left. I would like the walls to be white on the outside and coffee brown on the inside. So, in 3D view, I select all the walls and flip the materials. Now I'm back to the floor plan. I can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out very conveniently, but I can also do this using the slider next to the navi bar on the left. I found the fit to view at the bottom. I can also get the optimal view by double clicking with the mouse scroll wheel. The next step is to install the 100mm partition walls. I can rewrite the wall properties or choose the right style here. This is a one-layered, ten-wide wall. That's what I'm going to work with. I click on the corner of the wall and start to draw the partition. The reference line is in the opposite way. It needs to be repositioned. I can do this from the Options menu or I can use F5 or Space. I will place the next partition 2400 mm from the right wall corner. I need to use a reference point for this. At the bottom of the status bar we can find the button for reference point. I will select the wall corner. I drag the cursor to the left and enter the distance. Now the reference line is correctly positioned. I click on the opposite wall. For the partition walls, I used one layered 10 y wall style. Let me show you how to make a new one. On the left, under Styles, click on the gear icon to manage styles, then properties. Let's change the wall thickness to 160 mm. Clicking on the current style name at the bottom will bring up Styles menu. I can add a new one, one layered, ten wide wall. No need to specify a folder. I set the style to be available in all projects. This means that I will be able to use this wall in a new project. I will draw a new wall. This is now a 160 mm wide wall. In the following, we will look at the wall connections. First, let's have a look at on the L connection. 
I select it from the Quick Access Toolbar. I click on the first wall and the second wall. The L connection is created. I withdraw it. Now let's look at the T connection. I click on the vertical wall first, then on the horizontal one. In this case, the vertical wall, aka the first wall, is aligned to the second wall. Again, I undo the last step. Now I will select them in reverse order. The first, the horizontal, then the vertical wall. Now the command is aligning the horizontal one with the vertical. Let's see one more example. Let's look at the connection T for this case. If I want to connect the vertical wall to the horizontal wall, I have to click on the leg of the T-shape first, then on the bar, and the wall connection is done. Before I go any further with the design, it's worth making sure I'm working with the right wall dimensions. To check this, I will choose the Quick Dimensions option from the Dimensions menu. I click on inside of the wall and place the dimensions. In these two walls, I installed partition walls, so I have wall fragments remained. The total wall length can be displayed by the length command after selecting the two endpoints. If these dimensions are correct, we can continue designing. In the next step, I place a slab. In the building menu, properties, structure, slab window, I will set its parameters. I'm going to put the slab under the walls, so it will start from zero, and the thickness will be minus 300 mm to get it exactly underneath. I will use slab, slab by walls instruction. I will select the entire building using the selection window. The slab is finished. After that, I'm going to build the next level. I will copy the main walls with the slab onto the first floor. I will select all walls using the Select All command. The walls are selected. Then I press Ctrl and add the slab and remove the partitions from the selection. I click on the Level Editor button and in the window opened, I copy the selected elements up to the first floor. Now the first floor is the active level. I can switch between levels by clicking the blue arrows. On the first floor, I will create half walls. With the use of Select All command, I will select the walls. The properties of the walls are displayed on the left. I change their height from 2700 mm to 1000 mm. I switch to the 3D. We can see the outlines of the slab where it meets the walls, even though I use the same material and they are exactly in one plane. If no element is selected, we can remove the lines by clicking on the Properties tab on the left. At this time, the 3D window property is displayed. Make sure that in the Visual Effects segment, the joining surfaces is on. And let's edit the classes below. Wall and slab are selected. If I click OK to close, and then do a quick 3D build, the model is rebuilt, and the edges disappear. Please note, that when you edit the walls, the program will rebuild the 3D view and these lines will reappear. So you should set this before taking 3D snapshots, for example. Now let's look at the Navibar. When the 3D window is active, the 3D Navibar is displayed. By clicking on the house icon, I can display different views, including an axonometric view. Now I will set a perspective by clicking on the eye icon. It's worth choosing the 2D view instead of the top view. It shows the top floor, so I'm going to exit the dialog. Click on the floor plan to switch between levels using the blue arrow. 
I activate the 3D window and click on the eye icon again. Now we can see the ground floor. I will adjust the views. It is important that the camera Z and the target Z are at the same height. Of course, we can deviate from this if we need to, for example, when displaying a narrow bathroom. Let's take a look at the different 3D preview modes. We are using the consistent color mode, but here it is recommended to use the realistic one. This is a shaded solid image. The 3D preview mode can be darkened and lightened. The camera light and the daylight can be set in the 3D window properties. Let's continue with the installation of the windows and doors. I switch to the floor plan. I select properties opening door. I can set it with height and select the type. I draw your attention to the sizing of the opening. Before creating windows and doors, we can set the sizing of them here. The door properties have been accepted. I place the selected door type on the floor plan by selecting the placing door command. Let's take a look at the PDF floor plan for a moment. I have to place these three doors, two single leaf doors and one double leaf door. The first one will be 950 mm. The second will be 2700 mm from the wall corner. If I move my cursor to the inner side of the wall, I can enter the distance from the right. We can also switch between reference points when positioning the window, just like with the walls. The distance should be 950 mm. With the next click, I can set the door handing. I also place the next door 2700 mm from the wall corner. Now I have to switch between the reference points. I also set the door handing. I can change the reference point not only from the options menu, but also by pressing the F5 or the space. Here I see a problem right away. The door is sticking out of the partition. Let's look at why. I select the two doors by pressing the control. The properties tab shows the properties of the two doors. The distance from the wall line is incorrectly set to 100 mm. Since this is a 100 mm wide partition, the door is sticking out of the wall. For partition walls, it is recommended to set the distance from the wall line to zero. I place the same door on the inside of the outer wall in the middle. This marker indicates that the cursor is at the center point of the wall. The edge reference point of the door is selected. Let's move to this one to the center. So I'm going to align the center of the door with the center of the wall. The third door will be a double front door, so I have to modify it. I select the door, then the pencil icon. I click on the door type and select Flush External Double Door from the Double Folder. In the pop-up window, we can keep or discard the previous settings. No, we don't need to keep it in this case. The door width is 1500 mm. I will change this to 1400 mm. The distance from the wall is 10 mm. Let's look at the 3D model. In the next step, I will place the windows. Let's look at the PDF to see where to place them. The first window is 1000 mm from the wall corner. The next one is 900 mm. Here are other two windows. The first one starts 1000 mm from the wall corner. I go back to the floor plan. First, I can set the window property. I will place a flush window. We have to switch between the reference points. Distance is 1000 mm. I will place the next window. Here I also change the reference point. The distance is 900 mm. 
The third one is 1000 mm from the wall corner. The next one will fit exactly to this. The next step is to place furniture. I'm going back to the floor plan. I'm going to work here and place furniture from the design center. I have several options to choose furniture. Either I can use objects from the library or I can download them from the internet. First, let's look at the library. I'm looking for an armchair. I'm in the main library, so I type armchair in the objects. The armchairs in the library appear. I choose this one. If I click on it, I can set the base offset from the floor, which is 0 mm. I drag this chair onto the floor plan. If I move it to the wall, it rotates accordingly. I change the position slightly. If I click on an element, the markers appear. I rotate the armchair. I change the view to get a good look at the armchairs. Let's see how easily I can download an object from the internet. In the design center, I click on the home icon and then select 3D Warehouse. 3D Warehouse is a product of the American company Trimble. Here you can find object in SKP format. In addition, you can also download items from manufacturer's website. It works looking for SKP, OBJ or 3DS formats. There are two ways to download from 3D Warehouse. Direct download simply via internet browser or download via an external browser. Let's look at the internal one first. The 3D Warehouse window will appear. From here you can download items for free after logging in. Note that you cannot register with at google.com in an internet browser as this has been disabled by Google for security reasons. So, for example, create an at yahoo.com email address. I want to download a table, so I type in table. Diverse range of products appear. Before I choose the right table, let's see how can I use filters on this website. There will be lots of products, hundreds of thousands of uploaded items. One of the methods is to filter by polygon. I can set the upper limit to 54,000 for example. This means that only object with a surface area of less than 54,000 will be displayed. We see that fewer items appear in the list now. This is important because Archline XP will warn me if I want to retrieve an object with more than 50,000 surface areas. This avoids a significant increase in the number of model surfaces in the project. A medium performance computer will slow down at the surface counts over 2 million. I will type in coffee table. I select this one. I click on download and select the SketchUp model version. Note that the SketchUp model version number cannot be greater than the Archline XP program version number. The model downloads and I can place it directly. At the same time, it is added to the library. When I click on the item, right click menu, locate item in Design Center command, I see that it has been placed under the 3D Warehouse folder in the other subfolder. Continue placing and downloading objects. Back to the 3D Warehouse. Please note that not only direct downloading is possible, but also downloading with an external browser. You also need to be logged in here, but you can use a Google account. When I select an item and download it, it will be downloaded to my computer. After that, we have to import the file by selecting the file menu, Import SketchUp. Both methods can be used. I download an armchair again using the direct download. I place it on the floor plan. Now display the 3D model so I can see only this object. To do this, I select the chair and click on the quick 3D model icon, the 3D hammer. Then only the selected element will appear. 
The armchair has a pillow which is not good quality, so I want to save the chair without it to the library. The problem is that the armchair and the cushion are one item, so I cannot delete it. In this case, I have to use the sketch mode. The program saves the previous project, closes it and opens the sketch mode, which will contain only the selected object. When I click on it, I see that it consists of several elements. I select the cushion. I can move it or delete it. Then I choose Sketch Mode. Close and return to the project. Object, select all. I go with the same name and return to the saved project. I build a full 3D model by selecting Quick 3D Model command and set the correct perspective. In the 3D we can see the armchair without cushion. The floor plan still shows the original armchair. I right-click on it and locate it in the library. This is what I'm going to place. I delete the original object from the floor plan and drag the chair in from the design center. I place another table from the library. My goal is to show the client more furnishing variations in the entrance hall. I will use the layers for this. The purpose of the layers is to group and separate the elements of the current project according to different criteria. First, I will go into the Layer Properties Manager and click on the Used Layers. All the layers used so far in the project will be highlighted. Now all of them are visible and open. If I turn on All Layers filter, all default layers will be visible. I recommend grouping items by room and within that by item type. For example, put your living room furniture in the living room furniture layer, bedroom furniture on the bedroom furniture and likewise decorative elements and lighting on separate layers. If it is a room that doesn't already have a layer, it should be created. I create a new one for the entrance hall as follows. The All Layer filter should be selected. To make it faster, I copy the name of an existing interior layer using Ctrl-C, paste it into the name of the new one, and then rename it to Interior Hall Furniture 1. On this layer will be the first furniture variation of the hallway. I create another one. This will be interior hall furniture 2, the second furniture variation. Once I have prepared the layers, I can transfer the object to these. On the floor plan, I select the first variation, the two armchairs and this table. I change the layer of the elements in the Property Manager to Interior Hall Furniture 1. I move the other two pieces of furniture to Interior Hall Furniture 2. I'll show you another way to do this. I select the elements and at the bottom of the layer list I select Interior Hall Furniture 2. Using the layer walk, I turn off the first variation in the hall. I press Ctrl key and click on Interior Hall Furniture 1, so I take it out of the selection. The floor plan shows only the second furniture variation. I move and rotate the elements. The floor plan is correct but the 3D is quite chaotic, as all furniture is now on top of each other. The reason is that the 3D does not automatically track changes of the layers, so as not to slow down work on large projects. When I want to see the result of the layering, I have to rebuild the whole 3D model. For this, I use the quick 3D model command. Now I can see the second furnishing variation in 3D. Let's display the first furnishing variation. Using the layer walk, the layer list is appeared. Using Ctrl key, I turn on the interior hall furniture 1 and turn off interior hall furniture 2. 
Then I build a model using the quick 3D model known as the 3D hammer for short. The last topic is how to build only the part of the model. This can be very useful if I want to reduce the size of the model before rendering. In this case, I cut the entire room out of the model so that the render only calculates the actual room, not the other rooms that are not visible. The floor plan window is active. From the 3D hammer list, I select the Create Cutaway 3D View command. I select a part of the hall. In this example, I have displayed the model as a dollhouse. I have cut out part of the room. It's worth switching to an axonometric view. Pressing the right mouse button rotates the model. Pressing the scroll wheel moves it. I can see the cutout part clearly. I can go back to the full model by clicking on the Quick 3D Model button again. I go back to the perspective view. And this brings us to the end of today's workshop. Let me remind you to do this project yourself. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time. Goodbye.